Alright, so uh, let's uh, go ahead and start this little presentation here, which is over how to graph square and cube root functions. Go ahead and read this uh, little description I took my whole entire life's work to do, because I decided to do it, and it's there for entertainment, which is a pretty bad joke, but whatever. Let's just move on, it's pretty bad. Uh, starting simple, let's, uh, things to notice here, I'm totally comping, this is just a fanix background, because I'm cool. You know, that's really about it, thanks for noticing, I'm being pretty narcissistic here, let's go ahead and move on. So, how about we get started, shall we? Alright, so apparent function here is y equals the square root of x. And that's pretty easy, plug in something for x and then square root it, so... <coughs> this little convenient little table here and there's a couple things to point out so negative one and i negative one square root of negative one is i i does not go on a square root graph because it there is no i on the <coughs> coordinate plane guys it is all real numbers so then we have zero zero <coughs> one one the next perfect square after one is four, and the, that one is two, and nine, three. So the graph will end up looking like this, which is convenient because it's so easy. <coughs> it follows exactly like my table. There is no negatives over here in the x's. And as you can see, it goes zero, zero. 1, 1, then we got 4, 2, then we have 9, 3. And range domain, <coughs> the range and domain are extremely easy to remember. The range for this one is y is greater than or equal to 0. So that's obvious because there is nothing, it cannot be a negative, so it is nothing on this side <coughs> so and it's anything greater than or equal to zero because it does include zero and x is the exact same way x is greater than or equal to zero so let's move on with cube roots y equals the square root of x or square root cube root of x and that's extremely easy as well and here I have a table as an example so we have negative 8 here, which is the very, it, it also includes negatives, by the way, because it's cube. So we have negative 8 here, and the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. 0, 0. Cube root of 1 is 1. Cube root of 8 is 2. So this is what the graph will look like. So, as you can see, this time it does include a negative side <laughs> as it goes from this and it goes increasing to this right here so yeah I guess I'm going from a little small hill for some reason you know just slightly you know slowly climbing up here and then all of a sudden I decide to jump a wall and then I start climbing again so that's uh that's what I do I guess you know I just like to randomly walk up things uh, climb up walls and stuff it's my thing and uh god Mr. Stefanik Anyways, um, so we're going to continue on here with range and domain. Domain is all real numbers this time, so that's really easy because it includes all real numbers. Then the range is also all real numbers as it includes all real numbers. And let's go, go ahead and continue transformations of square and cube roots which is a fancy word for we're going to screw with the square and cube roots <coughs> now this is very similar to how absolute value graphs work so yes that means that we are bringing back a h and k so it's the uh, little equation here is y equals a cube root or square root of x plus h plus k so everything so right here we got the uh, horizontal shift for H and then we got the vertical shift for K and A we will get here to right now so 
all rules apply for all rules apply just like absolute value except for a <coughs> a is its own little thing that is for absolute for, for the cube and square roots which a means that you multiply the answer by the, that number <coughs> so a better way to f explain that is that x you square root or cube root x so let's say it's one because that's easy and let's say a is two cube and square root of x is one so we multiply one by a and a is two so you get two and then you get a coordinate and so that would be x that would be one two so yeah well you'll get a better view here anyway so let's go ahead and practice implementing this right here <coughs> so we got x y is a, y equals the square root of x plus three and then we'll get to that later so y equals the square root of x plus three so we have here is we have a horizontal or not horizontal vertical shift so that means we're going up three so from there we have this little table here it is not accurate for this necessarily but it's just a refresher to remember that there is no negatives we got zero zero one one four two nine three except for the y starts off at three and you go to four five and six instead of zero one two three so a better view will be right here on this right here so like I said there's the vertical shift that goes up right there so we go up three and then the same rules apply for normally what it is so we go from here up to here so we got z the uh, square root of one is one so we go up one here and over one so that will give us the coordinate one there's a four yeah one four my bad and then we go square root of four square root of four is two so we go to x is four and then we go to five x four y five four five so it's just going up normally like we did from down here it's just, just raised up here and then we go all the way to nine and that is six so <coughs> that's how that works and if we can hurry up we don't look at my slides this is a pretty dumb setup. I don't know why I didn't think this out clearly. So here we do have an A. So we have two, and then we have a negative three, which that means that's the horizontal shift. We're bringing that back here. So now let's go over this. Now I'm just putting this here once again to show you. But this time I actually did a little the work for you. So starting the horizontal shift of three. So, well, actually, it's not even correct now, now that I look at it, but uh, anyways. So, we started the horizontal th shift at 3, so we go over 3. So, technically, we start at 3 down here, and then we go over. But anyways, I got the y's correct. So, the square root of negative 1 is negative 1, so we plug negative 1 into here. Just then, we multiply that by 2 negative one by two is negative two so that's how you get that and then do the same thing for all the rest just multiply the answer by two and we will get this handy dandy graph right here so there goes the horizontal shift of three over three to the right and then like i said square root of one is one multiply that by a two uh, and you will get a 2 and a negative 2 on both sides. Do that the same thing for all the rest of them, and you will get the exact same answer for all the rest. And it's the same thing. So let's continue here. So we got some more practice. This one is implementing more um, of the a for square roots. So, excuse me. Um, so right here we have y equals negative 3 square root of x plus 3 minus 1. And once again we have an a, 
So A is negative 3. We have a horizontal shift of 3 to the left. And then we go down 1. So you know, like, go ahead and get this in here. That's the next problem. So here goes the table. This one is completely and fully worked out. So we start off with a negative 3 and negative 1. That's our very first point. And then we go from there. So the square root of 1 is 1 and times that by 3. So we go up one we go to the left one from here or right one from here. So 3 to 2 negative 2 and then 1 so then uh blah. so negative 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. But since this is negative 1, we go up to negative 4. So that looks that's that's why that's negative 4. So yeah, it's negative 4. I'm second guessing myself. My bad. Um anyway, so then we go from there and this is where I'm correct and the graph is not. And I don't know how it did happen like that. How it happened like that, but whatever. I will show you what it's supposed to be and I'll figure out what was wrong with it. Anyways, so then we go to the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is obviously 2. Now times that by negative 3, get negative 6. Then yada yada, 9, negative 9. So here we go. I'll show you this pretty stupid graph right here. So this is basic. This is the basic way it looks. So, the, I'm not sure what the problem is exactly. It does not even fully land on the correct number right here. Like, for instance, this is the equation right here, down here, for you everybody to see. Negative 3, the square root. I have to put the SQRT, parentheses, x plus 3, close parentheses, negative 1. That's how I had to put it. It was pretty weird. And uh, it ended up being this somehow. So who knows? So I basic it's basically right. So we got the here, these uh, negative three, negative one, square root of one, one. So we go over one, and they go down three, negative four. Then we go, then we do the square root of four, which is two. So we go over four, one, two, three, four, which happens to be wrong here. Well, square root of 4. No, that would be... Yeah. Okay, so there is this whole thing is pretty much wrong. So, something went wrong, majorly wrong. So, square root of 4. So we go from 4 to here. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then go down to 2. 2 times 3 is negative 6. This whole thing's wrong right here. So, I don't know. Don't ask me why it's wrong. I will not know. Um, next here we have. If we can hurry up and get through this thing. We have cube roots. So this is a uh, another refresher because I got lazy and I didn't want to really do the whole thing again. This is how it basically works, except for this zero zero down here. We'll be starting on a t positive two and a positive three. So the same rules apply so we've got two here three here two here three here and the zeros and so we go from two so the square root of one is one so we go up two and down two so up two right here that's well up two right here so that would be three and then we do from three we go up one that's four so there you go do the same thing for that side and then just continue on from there <coughs> and then the graph looks like this so we have the horizontal and vertical shift combined so it goes over two up three and then we got the square root of one negative one <coughs> And they got the square root of 8, negative 8, all the way over here. And the corresponding points with it goes over here and over this way. So that's how it all works out. <laughs> so that's about it.
Now, <clears throat> I wanted to go back for the range again <clears throat> so I can explain it a little bit better, make sure I get it right. So let's go back in the range here. So the range is for x it's easy. For x it's uh for the x, the domain, my bad. The domain is x is greater than or equal to zero. For the y, it is y is greater than or equal to three since it goes up three. So that's why that's like that. And this one <coughs> Once again, it's all real numbers. Domain and range are both all real numbers here because it both goes on both sides. There are no necessary restrictions here. So this next one right here is a little odd looking. But um so here the range or the domain is x is greater than or equal to negative three because it starts at negative three and then keeps on going that way y is greater than or equal to negative one because it starts at negative one kind of right there and then just keeps on going that way so that's what the range and domain are though for those and once again for this one all real numbers very easy to remember most i'm pretty sure that you'll always find all real numbers for uh... these cube root graphs so, um, yeah, so that is my presentation. Just going to go ahead and uh, go through this because I feel like it. And bam, there goes my presentation. All right, uh, time to uh, make me myself 100. All right, let's do this.